Welcome back everyone. We have an exciting one today. This is gonna be a brand new hack the box machine named Shopee. And I like this because it's easy rated. I'm a noob. I have over a hundred boxes solved on hack the box and I still need help with all of them. Let's get into it. All right, jumping right into things here. As a quick disclaimer, I haven't touched this box. I haven't turned it on. I haven't end mapped it. I have done nothing to this box yet, but I'm looking forward to it. All right, let's talk about what we know so far about this machine and speculate as to what it might be about and what word on the street is. All right, so first of all, the name is Shopee. Well, to me, my mind immediately went towards the OWASP juice shop. If you haven't heard of it, check it out. It's this whole shopping platform with all these intentional vulnerabilities to teach you about cybersecurity. So in my mind, I'm thinking we're probably gonna have a shop somewhere. It's an easy rated machine, so we might have to find, do some basic enumeration and find like a subdomain to find maybe a shop that isn't fully developed yet, or it's kind of hidden, or maybe it's just right there, some type of online shop, e-commerce, I don't know. But I'm pretty confident we're gonna have to like do some type of like some some type of order tampering so whether it's placing an order and using illegal characters to do command injection or output contents of the back end device or perhaps we're going to find out there's a database because that's usually the case with these shopping websites or web apps and maybe we're doing sql injection or maybe there's just a general vulnerability and we use a an easy cve or have to do some manual some manual work with it but i really think we're going to be focusing on a web-based application intended for shopping and we're probably going to have to play around with the back-end database somehow. Okay, let's look at the rating here. So we have a 3.4. This is interesting and this makes me feel like there was something on this box that people felt was maybe a little too difficult. I do find that interesting though. That is rare for easy rated machines, but it does look like after being out for three days, we have 731 user owns and 674 system owns. Don't forget to give respect to Lock Scan. He's the machine creator. Hack the Box wouldn't exist if it wasn't for these amazing community contributions like individuals like Lock Scan. So make sure you jump over here and give him respect, him, her. And looking down, you can see that the first user blood was done in six minutes. No way. And the system blood was done in 12 minutes. I'm shocked. I don't even know what to say. Okay, well, let's get an idea for what's going on here. But I do want to say congratulations to 22SH for your lightning fast user blood and your lightning fast system blood. Let's take a look at statistics. I'm curious what we got here. Looking at the statistics here, we can see I had a feeling that this was going to be very CTF like. I do notice a direct correlation between a box being rated as CTF like and a decreased user score. Not always, but I do kind of see and sense a pattern there. We can also see that it was heavy on the enumeration side and slightly heavy on the custom side, more so than a CVE or real life. That's interesting. Usually when you see people voting towards the CTF side of things, it's just kind of something gimmicky, but I, I don't want to say gimmicky. It's something that tests your understanding of the technology and how it works, but it's not something you would encounter, say, if you were a pen tester, you know, because of course this is an intentionally vulnerable box. When you're a pen tester, you're not dealing with something that somebody has made intentionally vulnerable. So I am kind of impartial when I do see bad ratings and a high CTF score. I actually value that because it, I find it challenges me in a different way. Just, just how I feel, but Let's look at the machine difficulty rating. So we do see a lot of people said this was a medium rate of box. So I think that's going to be a reason for the 3.4. People were probably feeling this could have been a little easier, maybe less time, didn't require so many layers of technology or a complex thinking, but I don't know. It's very hard to kind of rate and judge a box, but the community has spoken and they have said this was a medium difficulty machine, which is fine because I think typically within each category, easy or medium, you have your range. So you have an easy box, but then you have a range of easy boxes where you just run 
Metasploit and you're in, and then you have hard machines within easy. So when I look at this, I kind of feel like this was probably at the harder end of the easy category. And what that means is there's typically less steps to get to root, but it doesn't mean it's going to be easy per se. It's usually less work. So for example, uh, an easy machine could be you get user and root and that's it. Whereas on a media machine, you might need to get an initial foothold, get to user, pivot to another user, then get to root, for example. Or maybe you need to compromise after you get initial foothold, you have to compromise one service. And once you compromise that, then you can perform another attack to escalate to a privileged user and then you escalate to root. So usually just another step and so on along the way. All right, let's take a look at the word on the street and in the forum. So I noticed that people were talking about several things. One, people were definitely mentioning database, which is kind of obvious when it's a Shopee platform, you need a database to store all your items, serve them up to users. Secondly, people were talking about kind of getting past a hurdle. That hurdle was figuring out what was running on the box. So when I hear about that, that makes me think I'm looking to find something on the box after I've gotten access, likely that there's something that doesn't belong, which is in a sense, a test of your foundational understanding of Linux, because you do need to know, you know, if there's a folder in root called, I don't know, configuration, well, that doesn't belong. That's not one of the core default root folders on any Linux system, for example. But what I'm also thinking is that we might have to look at processes. So some ways to do that, or you can use the top command, just TOP, it's gonna pop you into an interactive terminal where it's gonna show you the top running processes on the device. You could also download PS Spy, which is a binary that it has a light and a big version and what it does and a static and a dynamic version. What it does is it shows you everything that's running on the box, which can be really helpful for just monitoring and looking for anything that's running um, on a timed schedule. So you're going to see things like services, startup processes, any binary that's passing commands. You're going to see that if there's a user on the box or any cron jobs or scripts that were executing commands, you're going to see those exact commands and where they're running from. And that's going to be really helpful as well. I'm kind of thinking maybe we want to look at network traffic, right? And we want to use SS TAC NAT, and that's going to show, show sockets. So it's going to show everything that's using a socket, or we can also use the commands PS TAC AUX, and that's going to show us all the processes running. And I think what ports as well, we can also use netstat as well, TAC ANON, I think, and that's again going to show us network activity. And we're really just going to be trying to figure out what's running on this box that doesn't belong or is kind of out of place. And we know that there is talk about SQL and databases. So I kind of have a feeling that that SQL and database situation, if that's what it is, is going to be for user. And then we're going to be looking to find out what's running on the box and what doesn't belong for the root phase of the machine. Other than that, if you're struggling, don't forget, jump in the discord, ask around in the Hack the Box Discord. You have an amazing group of people who are always happy to help. Don't feel bad. Everyone asks for help. I have over 100 mach machines solved and I'm still asking for help because I don't know everything. There's always a new technology I'm just unfamiliar with. Again, jump in the Hack the Box forums too. People try and have lively and interactive discussions there that can help you connect the dots or give you an idea of where to start your journey. Other than that, I hope everyone enjoys this machine. See you in the next video.